Hey, hello everybody, and it's time for another edition of Push to Talk. And I think we're going to uh, work on the uh, sound in Discord again, so be right back. How's that, guys? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Fantastic. Uh, I could not hear any of you. How about that? Because you're I can hear you. Well, we're on episode, what, like 60? <laughs> no, I think we're on episode 37 or something like that, but I don't actually know, so... Um, so I'm your host, I am your host, Eric Asmok, and we're here with Scythe. Say hi, Scythe. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Um, there's going to be a graph. I just want you to stare at that. No pen is recruiting. Top pat burners for the, uh, for the Alliance. I, I can't see the end of that graph. I'm, I'm sorry. It's too big to fit on there. It is 15 higher than the next highest participation earner. Uh, just be quiet. Yeah, that's, time he's had any that's a little too arrogant. Too I don't know if I can let that I, on the I mean, show. I don't know what yeah, you're doing. We're just, we're just gonna we're just slide it over a little bit. Just <laughs> so see that that will stick out part. Why is uh, what is it? Uh, Morkfang <laughs> is uh, now taking up <laughs> Sadus's call sign here. Wow, is the first MMO. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, let's go around the horn. <laughs> We've got McLeod with us as always. How you doing, McLeod? I'm good. I'm good. Ah, there he is. You had to do the push to talk. See that? Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting, too, because I'm trying to be good. And we have uh, Father Harn, Miss Warren, up Hello. down there. Whose lighting is substantially better if uh, mm. if Lilith is out there, so she can't complain. I want to welcome everybody listening here on uh, the Imperium News Network. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. As always, uh, feel free to, uh, you know, throw cheers throw bucks, throw anything at us, and certainly, uh, you know, subs would be Don't awesome be as follows. So we always appreciate that. So we're doing, trying to do some interesting things, which we'll announce probably, I don't know, in about two weeks. Yeah, so yeah, it'll um, be interesting. Are we getting paid? No. Oh. I, I, I want to know. I, I, I'm just doing work, and y'all aren't. That's all I mean. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> happening. We make, we make uh, him work. Um, I, I want to... I want to point out that Morkfang has announced that he is Sadus's official stand-in this week. Sadus is 200 so we, to say, wow, it's the first we, MMO. We do, uh, we do appreciate that. Damn. He must have got really drunk at uh, at Vegas. To still have a hangover. <laughs> so, all right. Hey, uh, Miss Warren, let's start with, uh, with your topic first today. Uh, you were talking about um, some of the loot drops here in the, uh, in the current event. So... Was this the loot drops for the event or the loot drops for the um, the Soyita? What's the what what's Like uh, uh, Satio, sorry. Satio. I didn't see him. I, I didn't see a Satio on. Well, the, you uh, wouldn't have seen it because no kill mail was generated for it. Oh, we're starting with that one. Okay, great. Are we doing? I was I was like, okay. So this is actually What's the, the question. Second... <laughs> what is? It? 
professors. We um, need we need a, we need a rehash of the song "Where Have All the uh, Kill Males Gone" or something like that. That would be a, a good one to do, right? So, a pandemic oh. horde. Yeah. So, super capital construction yard um, spontaneously combusted into fire and flames. And I think it was too many people were shooting it on the kill mill that it failed to generate a kill mill. Because this is the second time we've actually seen this. There was a CO2 one in, during the Fade campaign, which failed to generate a kill mill as well. Again, I think it's it, it's down something to... it's something to do with Satios because like more people shot the you know the keep stars that have died. Mm then shot that so to you i can guarantee it could be a case that. of because it could be it's something just... wrong with it's something wrong with satios and how they generate yeah. kill mails and what they drop so i think it was about 50 billion was worth dropped obviously i don't know because we don't have the kill mail but there was at least because like 50 million m3 worth of stuff which points it towards being a uh, situation where titans and supers were in construction. Um, I mean, I was on the fleet, and I do remember on the... I mean, this, this is all, of course, like, you know, um, uh, like, subject to, you know, it being a personal account. But, um, you know, being in the fleet, like, there was... Uh, people did say, like, when we killed the uh, Satio, we rushed in to, you know, to basically zero, kind of, uh, like, right on top of it. Um, people did say that, like, you know, there were Titan parts in it. So, you know, there were Doomsday arrays and whatever it, whatever it was, like, inside the actual, uh, in, inside the, the wreck. And without the kill mode, it's hard to verify, so we can only go off with what people said. But I think there was an error in salvaging... And it came up saying, sorry, you can't salvage this. It has, like, 50 million M3. Which is quite entertaining. I mean, hopefully someone, like, you know, um, like, screenshotted the, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the wreck. But I have no idea whether that's actually serviced or not. There was a, um... A log message posted on Reddit about the salvaging, so there was that to be taken from it. But yeah, a huge major structure for Pandemic Horde destroyed, and unfortunately we can't provide the evidence of exactly what was inside. You know, you go off by here saying, and again, this is the second time it's happened. It's it's funny, and it's funny as well because NC was uh, was actually poised to come in and help out. And uh, you know, break kind of basically breaking like you know what they what they basically said when they were like, oh yeah, you know, we're resetting pandemic horde, um, and then suddenly, oh no, we're not resetting pandemic horde. We're gluing them to help them out on this, and then they didn't come and help. So, you know, mm. I, I find that you know very amusing. You know, sort of yeah. so a lot of <laughs> infighting <laughs> going on right now, which is like goons have left the north to go back and to build as many titans as possible and the north is literally just in fighting <laughs> which is basically means well we're basically two birds with one stone situation here we don't actually have to be the one fighting and we're the ones being able to continue to rebuild our supers and titans i always sit back and i always sit back and wonder how much of that is like our behind the scenes stuff in there trying to sow the seeds of this. Are you saying that there's possibly a division that is doing things to make things happen? There, I don't, there, there might possibly be. Because from what I understand is they're always looking for new people. Black hand moves in mysterious ways. You mean like how Patriotic Tendencies is always looking for new people, yeah, like right now? Recruiting. You could be a top <laughs> map earner too. Oh yeah, we brought our A game today. You could, you could fucking be awesome like we are. <laughs> That's all good for like ten more days, or you know, terrible. Fuck again. off. Thanks. Thanks. Shut up. <laughs> well, if our top map earning squadron didn't go to E Vegas, you know, we would. Uh... 
he 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 specifically didn't go off. Dude, you you go to E Vegas, you should get like instant hundred paps perk. Yeah, if you, you know, <laughs> if you get a flyer, I can redeem for an, uh, for a hundred. Insta pap, right? Insta pap. Why you yep. guys weren't? We didn't win the no. cup. We weren't that many. We weren't the highest number of alliance in position. If they would have done like total Eve players in Vegas instead of just at the convention, I think I think goons would have fucking steamrolled. Yeah, goons just don't go to the con because the con is worthless when you can go get drunk with goons. I gotta be honest. I mean, I went to E Vegas what two years ago, right? And yeah, I, I went to the the convention, and it really wasn't all that great. Number one, it's at the link, so that's terrible, right? Nobody wants to go there. Yeah, the link is shit. And um. You know, second is, uh, as somebody said in the chat, you feel dirty going in the lake. I mean, I'm afraid to drink at the bar. And they didn't have enough bartenders. That was key. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, I would much rather go and hang out with guys that play the game and ladies who play the game and uh, just have a good time as goons. And anybody else who wants to hang with us. So, um, so we have the missing kill mail right from the Sodio and it had big stuff in it. Clearly it was building or appeared to be building, you know, big ships and they're all gone and hooray. And, you know, as Mitten says, high fives all around on that one. Um, but we can't prove it. So of course everybody will deny we ever blew it up. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. As is always everything in and then you have the interesting piece where PL or was it PL or no, nor NC, right? Miss. Uh, NC was going to unblue, and then they reblued them to help, and then never showed up to help. Well, they had fifty something titans ready to jump in, but they just never decided to actually get the balls to uh, to to light the sign on jump in. Um, we haven't discussed snuff yet, so don't worry, you've not missed out on anything snuff related. Nah, uh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you want to talk about the? Uh, well, first, I want to I want to welcome right now the seasonal event. Yeah, I want to welcome RJ to the show because RJ, I think you were here at the beginning. Can't hear you, Eric. Ah, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, man, I'm having trouble with the focus on my Discord. Um, I want to welcome RJ to the show because his voice has popped up, and RJ, I think you were probably here the whole time, and I just missed you, so I apologize for that in the intro. I didn't want to say anything. I want to I, I want to address uh, what SBR three hundred blackout says. Go ahead, because he's like asking whether we talked about snuff or not, and uh, you know about in it and you know relationships and stuff like that. In it had a relationship like in in terms of working with snuff before snuff was part of the Imperium, and I'm fairly certain it will revert back to that like after snuff has left. Like so, you know, we've we've always had a decent relationship with snuff, and I'm fairly certain it will continue. So. I mean, to be completely honest, like the last few, like ops where Snuff has been there as well, and we've been kind of like fighting on, we've been fighting on the same side. Like we've been playing or playing. Well, I it was a, I think the on those two on the that Swatio fight um, before when we were putting it into final structure, final ref, like because um, Horde just decided not to actually fight at all. Like we were all just sitting around like mashing the structure really bored so we just decided like like uh, our fc's just decided to just you know have a bit of fun and we started like snatching like the the other fleets fc's like using our uh using our our, our command des uh, destroyers it was so much fun and we ended up uh we ended up snatching yondas who was the fc for snuff at the time and uh to the point where he ended up actually like you know, joining our fleet and flying around with us, uh, up and even to the point where like his fleet left, like to go back home, and he was left on his own, and we had to actually like take him back home with us. It was so funny because we we were just flying around in like we were flying around in our um uh in our uh, um uh, Stuka fleet, which is basically like a bunch of bomb like a bunch of dive bombers and stuff like that, um and like command destroyers and and all that jazz and so we had all of these like destroyers and frigates right like flying around uh, and this massive like nightmare ba uh, like battleship like just with us every single time it was ridiculous yeah one of the important things i think to notice or to note at least about uh you know snuff not leaving the 
you know, being blue with the Imperium, right? It appears that from all that we know and understand at this point, that was that was mutual, right? It was it was, hey, we're gonna go do something yeah. else for a while. And that's an interesting aspect of the game, right? When you do things in a normal way rather than, you know, being nasty about it, that tends to uh, make sure that relationships like Init had with Snuffed Out prior to the Imperium can continue, you know? Totally. So, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those dynamics that we have in this game that is just not in any other game, right? I mean, you can actually, I mean, in another game, right? If you blew somebody else, theoretically, right, you just have to kind of remember and we, we had that in H1Z1 and things like that when we try to remember. But in here, it's it's pretty visible and interesting. Exactly. Um, you know, and uh, let's see. What else do we have to talk about stuffed out? Anything? And one of the driving factors of that, I think, right? Um, some other think, folks think... are coming back, right? Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I think I heard, but I haven't, like, actually had this confirmed in any way, shape, or form, but, like, I'd heard that someone was, like, saying, well, you know, sort of that Snuff was, like, shooting a, you know, sort of a, a, a Imperium structure or something like that at one point. Um, if they are, yeah, okay, whatever. As long as it's not, like, a Keepstar or, you know, a Satio, like, uh, I'm fairly certain, you know, uh, Imperium's not going to really care. True, true. So let's go on to, you know, let's take take a few moments here and think about, you know, what uh, what happened in the north, right? We had this, this long war in the north, and then it's over. And, you know, did we, did we learn anything about our enemies? Did we learn anything, or did we have fun? What went on there? They don't want to dock. Insider deals are great at splitting up coalitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't I, piss off the Imperium. Well, I, I think what I think what we found out is um, from a game perspective, right? We need to be careful. You don't want to completely decimate your enemies or you won't have any. What do you guys hmm. think about that statement? It's literally a case of it's cool to blow up enemy ships and stuff, but when you... Because I've been looking at buying into rock crawls, as in, like, to build them. So I've just been looking at, like... Rock crawls are, like, the biggest... Well, they're, like, a capital ship that die the most. I can't, I can't do English today. That's fine. Um, so I was looking, right, okay, so let's start looking at building rock crawl stuff. And you just look at who's losing the rock crawls, and you're like... That's not replaceable. That's not replaceable. That person's probably going to quit. And you see, you start to think, actually, hang on. Is this going to be a situation where our, our enemies are put into a technological recession, where they cannot, they can't rock all mine because they don't can't afford to build the rock walls, and then they can't protect the rock walls because they can't build the super capital fleet to protect the rock calls. They fail Cascade. In an egg situation. So what, are they just going to be down to cruisers and battleships, mining and barges, but then that's not enough to feel like you're anywhere going to win? So it effectively just gets put into a recession and everyone quits because they can't maintain losses. Well, yeah, I, I mean, so let's think of it from this perspective, right? Does that mean that movement of large fleets and movement of fleets that can attack those type of players is too easy? Or yeah. you think so? Do you think it should be harder to move across New Eden? Yeah, when they announced that jump bridges weren't going to have any um, jump fatigue and you could stick anything through it, I was generally not happy with that because that just creates a super highway for us to move from Delve up to Fade and North regions back down easily. If a fight kicks off in the north, we can send our capital ships up, 
no issues. If a fight kicks us down, we can immediately send them down the highway. And the thing is, these structures are easy to reinforce and to damage, but we can easily set up like a second run runway. It, it just gets to a stage of where we would win. We would be able to strategically reposition our fleets so quickly. We could be able to respond to anything. We would we would win. To those who don't know, haven't seen the leaks. A uh, mass limit has been introduced on the jump bridges, so effectively you can't put supers and titans through it, and there's some dreads that you can't because you're using, using plates, so you might have to uh, turn your plates off when you're jumping through. That is Apart interesting. That, I, did not, I did not see that. How, where did that come yeah. up? Uh, Hobo leaks. It's yes, got yeah. idea. For My those who do not know lights off a problem because most of the time you have that gate controlled and you can fit off of another dread yeah so it doesn't matter but, um if you're on hobo leaks so if everyone doesn't know hobo leaks monitors all the information that's uploaded to the test server and if there's any difference it highlights it so when they made that change it got highlighted and you can just go through it and see the lock so you can see that a jump limit got changed from nothing to the mass to block supers. It's very good for figuring out what's coming ahead. Either way, I think that's much... a good change, though. I was going to say, either way, how much um, like LO would that take for a friggin' super to go through one of those things? And then you put it into a blob? I don't think that would be feasible. Um, well, well I mean, there's... Bring... Sorry, go for it, I was going to think it would probably be a bring your own liquid ozone situation because um, the mechanic to be able to just drop into Citadel is going to be used. So that mechanic from when you can just like drop stuff into structures, that's how you fuel these structures up. You just go over, do the one-way transfer system and the fuel's in. To the Citadel? And to the structure, to the flex structure. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things that drives me nuts. Let's make each individual structure just... For instance, if you go to fuel a a jump bridge today, right? You can do it from inside the pause shield, right? Yep. You go to fuel them tomorrow in the new structures, right? You've got no shielding. Ooh, risky. But it's, it's going to be at feature parity, dude. Like CCP <laughs> said it. It's just it's interesting how they change it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you, the thing is, you can place these structures in weapon range of other structures. So you undock from your keep star and you'll warp to your thing whilst you have a gunner on Overwatch. And if it's in a major hub like 1DQ1, uh, faxes will be on standby. So they can just literally warp to you. It's just a change, right? I'm just noting the change, right? Not saying whether it's good or bad. I also want to give a shout out to Nissen uh, for his three months of subscribing to the channel in a row. Thank you very much. If anybody out there has had their Amazon uh, sub uh, expire uh, lately this month, make sure that you go in and you renew it. We'd love if you renew it during the show. So it'd be great. Yeah, the Citadel range is 200 kilometers. So, you, right. so it's out of Tether, but you can still... Fire bombs, fire the weapon, you just drop fighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have liked them to just... It, it would have been more interesting if they would have tied them to the structure in some way and the fueling could have happened within the structure. This would be um, yeah. from a where you go to fuel everything under the sun, right? Um, could make it, could life, make it, a could make life it more risky. But not, not really game-changing at all. No, not really. No. So I honestly, having some risk and having to refill what essentially allows you to move your, your capital fleet without issue, it's whatever. But it doesn't allow you to move your capital fleet anymore, right? That's the discussion, right? That well, we, it sounds like we can, so long as we use shield. You can, use, you can put capitals <laughs> and dreads and stuff through, but you can't put supers and the titans. But right. if, I can, if I can move 500 dreads or 500 carriers into a system does it fucking matter if i have to have some of my super fleet arrive late well i mean it's because if, if i always... can 
blitz carriers. Who's going to stop me? I mean, car carriers are infinitely more uh, downable by, uh, you know, by dreads than, you know, supers. Even with a bit of fact support. Like, well, then, it's, then we'll, we'll have dreads. It's one of those things where it's a case of, like, it's it'll be a case of, like, you know, the initial fight, if, like, people are moving capitals, like, through these gate systems, like, ahead of, like, a super fleet, like, initially, a big, if a big fight kind of went down, it probably would get pretty bloody before, like, supers actually came in. Yeah. Which but is, is that... probably a good thing. Because yeah, I was about to say, is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing at all. It probably, it's probably a good thing, because it means that more shit will die. That's called content. And people will get more kill mails, and people will feel like they've actually achieved something in fights. Yeah. Like, on both sides. The the other so thing... Super start coming in. The other thing that this ends, right, is you no longer have to um, jump your freighters uh, using your titans. So that's the useful thing. Mm. Mm. If you're willing to risk your fully loaded freighter... Into one DQ, right? And into one DQ, out of one DQ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, leaving one DQ is fine. I wouldn't want to jump in. I would one never one. jump it into one key, one DQ that way. But if I don't have to move my Titan back and forth to move at one freighter, mm -hmm. or having me freighter on the way, that makes right. it easy. Right. Absolutely. Mm, that's yeah, it's that's it's logistic. it logistically it helps me in the long run. And we're going to give a shout out to RJ. Thank you, RJ, for resubbing during the show that you're on. It's That's awesome. awesome. I would have, I would have totally forgot if it wasn't for your awesome reminder. And I just want to remind everybody that Patriotic Tennessee is recruiting. Okay. That's a yeah, really yeah. good reminder. Well, let's let's take that as a little bit of a segue to, to part from this conversation a little bit. Um, we uh, did you have want to talk about the Crimson Harvest. No, we had B caps. Um, you know, oh, talk about yeah, players coming into a a new player coming into the game in Eve, right? And it really depends on what you want to do, right? If you want to go into Nullsec, there are plenty of Nullsec groups that uh, will bring you in and and help you train, right? And traditionally, we say that that is Karma Fleet in in the Imperium, but there are others too. I'm not going to name them all. I'm just going to say, you know, that's that that is a possibility. If you pen, want, pen dot. Pen dot. If you want no questions asked, we'll happily take anyone, even if you're called. I will a wax all of your entire fleet, McKay. I am. <laughs> I am gonna. Can, let me see if that name is available. Hold on. Let me log is in. Is that is that a character? Because I saw a very very not suitable for work character name. I mean, in the uh, local in the uh, recruitment chat. Not really cool. much, uh, um, so, Kaldari yeah. Citizen and then a big string of numbers? Or something of that nature? Hang on a second, I'm being I... hot drop by rats. Oh, oh. great. Um, like, I um, actually yeah. recently logged into one of my accounts that I had not logged into for a long time and found that I did have a Kaldari Citizen something, and I have no idea what I had named that character, so I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think because I thought I knew all your character names. You don't, don't even know. All, you don't. You don't know all my character names, dude. Back in the day, I did. Yeah, yeah. I have more. I know. Is Kautari citizen what they use when you uh, find you? It's, it's whatever race your character is. They'll do Galinti citizen, Kautari citizen, Amar citizen, or whatever, and then oh. a string of numbers if your name was got got reported for being inappropriate. Yeah. So as we talk about the North, did we uh, did we learn that any of our enemies were Sort of poor. Yes. So, when you, yeah, when your doctrines go from don't worry, uh, T2 with bling to actually let's drop it from T2 rigs to T1 rigs to fuck it. Um, we don't need rigs. A and I's look good. <laughs> Do we feel bad for them, though? No, not one yeah. iota. Okay, so, See, that doesn't matter if, if they're poor. No, when they're still buying T2 ships out of Jitter, like, mm. you, 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 I don't have any, you, you any can't, kind of... Yeah. There, there, there's, there's no, there's no, like, there's nothing about buying T2 ships in Jitter now, like, with the changes to, like, you know, to uh, to moon mining, that makes that would make me think that, oh, poor them. Okay. You know, so if you good. you you've got enough yeah. space, which they definitely do, and they've got enough moons, which they definitely do, yeah. and they don't have like their own T two production to make T two ships, and they're 
but they have to go so to the point where they have to go and buy ships from Jitter and like oh, you mean buy ships from the Imperium? Yeah, yeah, it's just, like they're, they're literally buying what was happening, that. which is essentially what is happening, and it's yeah. just like I don't have any like I don't have any sympathy for them whatsoever when that happens because it's just like it's so obvious and it's so like it's just you're giving us money to screw you over and then we're destroying the ships and then yeah. you're coming to us again and buying the ships at an increased price it's just it's the most absurd and dumb thing in the world okay but it's also fucking amazing as well it's it's, it's, it's pretty entertaining hilarious. as a mm. care bear in the goons I, I think it's pretty fun i think the biggest lesson i like you can take away from the war is and i know people will just scream blue donut but you need to have some sort of overarching king of the ship ship pile to be able to defend this system within from intosa sink simply because yes you can own your own little stuff but if you actually look at the way that fade was chopped up uh co2 owned dw which had a keep star and then darkness owned a system in the same region and I keep starving now. Let me just pull up dot runs. Yeah. And the problem with that is the way that you defend this um dark darkness owned DO six H and other keep star DO and DW is owned by CO two. Now since they fell under the same region, the way that you actually defend and keep your space is that you need to protect every system from assault. You lose a system, you it's harder for you to protect those other systems. So when the intosisting happened um, for the DWI hub, only CO2 intosisters could defend. So when CO2 physically ran out of intosis links, ran out of intosis ships and people who wanted to do it, they lost it. They couldn't go, you couldn't have darkness jump in and do some intosis in because that would count as an attack while the best thing that they could do was jump in and kill you know yeah any anybody attacking the intosis structures Mm. you You can't actively defend you can only support i think and then when the dw keeps our fail um again that just opens up more systems because if you don't have control of the systems, uh, we can just drop faxes on the nodes, and you've then got to escalate to control that node. Or yeah. you're just going well, to was... Well, it, it was it was killing the iHub, which also killed the uh, the, the capacity of them to be able to put jammers up uh, and stop us from basically, <laughs> you know, dropping faxes on the nodes and just saying, you know, giving them the big middle finger and saying. Yeah. Because ETAC 9, even though it wasn't a Keepstar system, securing that system and de sino it allowed you to drop faxes in that could then gate into free target systems. So effectively, yeah, um, if everyone was under the same banner and the same alliance, they would have had a better chance of defending. So that is a lesson you have to take. You have to accept that we do it. We do it because it works. Yeah, that's one of the challenges too, and and you've got Everyone some. Just wants to group together and have their own identity, which is okay. But under the current soft mechanics, that's not working. Yeah, that's one of the things I think we can say we learned from the North, right? In mm. within the coalition, you had some smaller alliances that just could never keep their space, right? Not under Fazi Sab, and I guess that that you know brings up the conversation. You know, I think we've always said that Fazisov, in general, is a terrible Sov system. Do we have any indications anywhere that that CCP is even thinking of fixing this? I I don't think so. It didn't sound so from E Vegas, right? They're new structures. They didn't didn't state anything, and they they didn't they didn't like talk around the subject either. So, I, I don't think we are, and I don't think they have a reason to change it. Like hmm. it, I, it is intosising uh, Sov less strain on the server, or is it causing the game to not function? You know, 
Well, I, I would argue that it is that. a mechanic that is terrible for, for battle, right? But at yeah, the same it's terrible time... terrible for battle, but does it work? And does it have bugs? I mean, it's, it's so terrible, we don't well, want to take more space. Yeah. 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 Well, Which it, does that, that helps their server load, I guess, because yeah. there's not fleet fights every day. I mean, it does put a limit on how much space we can realistically control because we wouldn't we never plan to take the north because we wouldn't want to continue to have to send fleets up there to protect it every time yeah. an atosis attack happened but the the power multiplier of a single intosis ship that makes an enemy flash form a fleet is like cool well i'm just going to intosis for two cycles decloak yeah. up watch you come in with your fleet watch the fleet stand down and I'm going to do it again. Yeah, and just a fuck. It was that stuff that the Fremen did, and it just wore out the opponent's morale. And it got to a stage of where, even if you blew up the Intosa ships, we were getting isk, isk for it. So, half <laughs> the time, it's awesome. like, wow, well, kill me so I get this SRP. Yeah. So it's almost come down to in the game that you need a, a near unassailable core home area for everybody who wants to be a major player. And then essentially all that we can do at this point is just do raids on strategic um, structure like targets, right? Because you're not interested in the SOV. No, but you can kill Soyotes that are producing capitals and stuff like that yeah. and actually hurt them. And you have, it, to, you have to hurt the industrial complex at this point. There's no real fight. And let's think about that. Is that so terrible of a gameplay? It's almost like you know, hey, you have your home base and you go out raiding. What, what do you What do you guys think of that one? I mean, yeah, but it does kind of it does like, promote the sort of the uh, the aspect of like you know whoever's king of the hill, you know, in the in like in in the game worldwide, kind of like. Uh, is basically the one who doesn't get like raided, but then yeah. again, you know, you kind of look at what happens in, you know, in uh, in Delve every so often. Like, you know, you you end up with like situations that happened a little recently where forty something, you know, mining barges get bombed out of existence. Forty billion, like, forty you know, billion is worth yeah, maxes. and it, and it's just like, so it does still happen. You're still open to attack. So it's it's not like it's an impossible thing to have, like you know for the top dog in in the you know in Evon in Evon Nine and in, in like New Eden to not lose a whole bunch of shit in their in their backyard. So the problem is though is if the idea is there that goons are unstoppable, then it's they are. If, if the idea exists that they are unstoppable, they are unstoppable. Yeah. Because people, yeah, just yeah, if the think... idea is that pandemic cord can destroy the goons, pandemic cord can destroy the goons. It's a matter mm. of morale. Like that's it, it wins wars. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, it's if you if you have a just a, a an iron will, um, and you can share that iron will, then you can make things happen. In you simple as. Yeah. You get people to believe what you believe, and you can make shit happen. Yeah. Rally the troops, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. but but if you're a shitler and you stab people in the back constantly, or threaten to cut you, off hands, you know, you threaten to cut off hands, <laughs> or like you, you know, or, or you, you know, you, you change allegiances as, as as often as you change underwear, which I hope you is promise to show up and then completely don't honest, help allies. Then you're, then you're yeah, crazy. you're not gonna you you're not gonna make it in this game, or at least you're gonna be you know you know you're gonna be subservient to other people. Most definitely. Yeah, if you if you can't prove to your own membership that your leadership team is going to do what they say they're going to do, you're not going to win. So, I don't know. So, so what you're saying is that we better build that keep star that we keep. Eric, saying. what I'm, what that that was a a, <laughs> a subtle threat that that keep Demar better build that keep star. Okay, that's all. Somebody <laughs> better start um, mining some moon goo. Yeah, I, I have some for uh, I, I don't know what we need left, really because someone use... won't update a spreadsheet. Your Keepstar doesn't really use Moongo. Your main requirement is PI. Yeah, yeah. I know. I He's just want to... We, we, we just take, we'll take ISCO nations. We'll buy the PI. We'll take anything. Um, no, the, um, I wanted to give a shout-out here to uh, Shobobo. 
thank you for the uh, for the follow today. We do appreciate that. So I. So can I talk about something not as interesting now? Bring it on. You can talk if let's, you want to talk about boring stuff. Sure. Yeah. Well, t let's talk about this uh, this uh, event, the Crimson Harvest event, and how. The, okay. Yeah. This is right? funny. It's it's pretty stupid, um, because <laughs> I take a carrier under one of these these gauntlets. I sit there. I wipe the gauntlet in about five minutes, and the game tells me I've made 150 million isk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I go how. Nice. Uh, because apparently you just print boosters, uh, like damage boosters and all this other fun crap. Um, so right now I'm sitting on almost a billion isk worth of uh, uh, drugs um, and blueprints Fucking to make more drugs. <laughs> and that was after running 20 or 30 sites, you know? I... I uh, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. They're pretty entertaining. Um, they're pretty quick to do, and for the amount of effort it takes to run them, uh, it's it's more of a a dash between you and the other carriers or heavy ratting ships in system to get on site to get the money than it is you're anything there, else. So it's you're there, literally going. I don't need tank. Just give me warp speed. God yeah, damn it. I, let me let me tell you my my trick. I have an Inyo with dual webs sitting there with my carrier after the site finishes, waiting for the next site to spawn so I can warp instantly. Can, <laughs> That's how bad it is. Can, can I ask a dumb question of the show? Are you guys ready yeah. for this? Go for it. Why the hell is Uranus in chat, but but not on Discord with us for the show? Why, why is that? He's an asshole. Because he's an asshole. Uranus, <laughs> you're the oh. show. you literally are on the here. server. The reason Uranus is hanging out in chat is instead of being on the show, it's because we've deployed a two-pronged attack. Ooh, a for... two-pronged attack. Are we allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't want to give up any OPSEC here. I didn't, I didn't know prongs were OPSEC. It's a two-pronged attack. So Uranus hits the recruitment in the ch in the Twitch chat whilst I'm talking about AMOC recruiting okay. live on air. You know who, who recruits ah. harder than AMOC? Hey, See, there we go. Now recruiting. We actually. I hear, I hear, pe I hear yeah. Penn has a graph to show why they. Are there's there. there's a no. graph right there. I do not. I don't, not, very I don't well like that graph there. up there. I don't like that graph up there. You don't like the that squeaky graph? bee follow is great. Yeah. Follow, the follow, follow the squeaky bee. He knows. I like social, social, socially obsolete, two pronged. So it's like the spork of attacks. Fantastic. <laughs> that is. We are going to use the attack spork somewhere can the next, can the next fleet be called the spork fleet i don't know who's on theory crafter right now but it needs to be spork fleet. i think I everyone think, get in your spork fleet i think i think it's gonna be a fleet that's uh, that is good at doing a few things but it is it, really really like subpar a, a great interdiction <laughs> it could be a decent interdiction fleet a decent uh structure bass fleet but it can be wiped out by a focused fleet real quick i think that's yeah, gonna be the um, next fleet that uh Macadin takes out uh uh, it, it's going to be entirely made out of uh, of uh, uh, those stupid uh, weird ships from this this new uh, site thing they have. What is, what are they called? The uh, Triclavian. It's a Triclavian fleet. Is the Spork fleet? That'd be cool. Yeah, a Triclavian fleet called Terrible. Spork. I would fly that. I would. Like I, I'm liking, liking the battle cruiser. That battle cruiser looks decent. gorgeous. Battle cruiser is going to be insane. Yeah. It's going to be a decent. Like I might. Like, I'm training Titan 5 at the moment, so I've I reached that, that point in life where I don't know what to train for, so I'm just training Titan 5. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, ah, I, whatever. I got nothing left to live for except yeah, Rex. Like, but if, um, like, have you got all the different Titans? So you're just in, in no, yeah, you need all, chance all, all that if you, if you, you, you need to have all four Titans. And the what reason if you, why need, you need to bullock? have all four Titans is if you're flying around and suddenly you find a, a, an unpiloted Titan. <laughs> You know, if it's the Titan Lightning. that you can't fly, you're going to be really fucking pissed off, aren't you? That you can't grab that Titan and jump out because you don't have uh, the skill for it. I've actually Which... got, like, half a million unaccounted mm. skill points for situations like that. <laughs> Where I could just it's really it. not going to get you to the next Titan, you know. No. Yeah, you, gotta, you, you know, you need the server to crash about 100 more times to have enough skill points to do that, right? Yeah. 100? No, I got 500,000. That's enough for a Titan level 1. Okay. That's true. Do you have all the skill books at least? No, of course not. I spent it all I spent it all on mechs. 
Okay, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It's like the the Eve drug, right? I spent it, spent it all on Max. Mexilon. I needed eight billion units of Mexilon. And... <sighs> Breaking and Bad, make a Mex lab. I am the one who entosis. <laughs> Hey, can can somebody tell Uranus that you know he can eat and not be on video, right, on the show? Yeah. And somebody type that out for him because I'm, I'm not sure. Out. That's, anyone oh, actually okay. found an empty Titan? My answer is a big probably. Um, yeah, I found, yeah. I found yeah. like three many, empty many... eyes over the years. Hang on a just second. There. Let me let me bring a fair and balanced media source. A mock recruiting. No, Fair and balanced media source. Right? Found a, Is there such a thing? Go ahead, RJ. Uh, I was going to say, I found an empty orca once, but I couldn't fly it. So it was that situation just a lot. I, I, would, I, I would like to say that there was a uh, uh, an Eve story that was put onto Reddit a, long time, a little while ago that uh, that, you know, centers around, in actual fact, someone finding a, uh, a Titan that was unpiloted. And it was Blue Melon by the way, um, who who was the, the unwitting uh, victim of that particular thing. You guys know this one. And Market Tycoon says, Snuff found one yesterday. Yeah, I just found the Reddit post now. Snuff, you know about this. Uh, got a, snuffed out, got a live fire from, from Spectre Fleet. Oh, yeah, there's also that as well. There's, it was in um, so they, hit people... a post, they hit a post shield, and it was like, yeah, 2 hour reinforce. Nice. We're gonna grab this. <laughs> we'll just wait. So it. people find empty titans all the time. If it's you like they it, it, talk it. about it, they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna undock my titans." Like, when did you get a titan? Um... Well, you see what happened was <laughs> someone in court chat going, "Where's my fucking titan?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, so from no system last week. So market tycoon says it was from Atlas uh, Durham. And he was the guy that was uh, bridging Spectre Fleet. But yeah, every time. <laughs> I guess that, that is like it's so funny. It's kind of like you know, thanks for the fish, thanks for the Titan, right? Thanks. So long, and thanks for all the fish, Eric. There you go. Really, you're gonna go there? I did, I did, That's but it, but but it's really Titan. What what is happening to you, Miss? There, you're. Uh, you're I have fruit flies. You can't that... see them, obviously. They're too small to be viewed on the interwebs. But I have little fruit flies flying around because it's that season, I guess. It's just little shitless. <laughs> we didn't get any this year around where we are. It went straight from 80 degrees down to freezing. That nor'easter, man. We, we do. It literally okay, froze um, in the air and went... Yep. Yeah, it's, it's cold as shit out there, dude. We, we have to turn our heat on in storm, October. apparently. Let's, let's, let's talk on. about something non-Eve for just two minutes. And then we'll come right back, right? So we're talking about I cold have... air, right? Have you guys ever gone outside and blown bubbles in freezing temperatures? Uh, yep. Are you doing this thing? No. Oh, yeah, no. I've, I've seen I've seen pictures of it where the ice is kind of form when on you the, uh, the, on the surface. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, when you have children, this this happens, right? The the uh, bubbles freeze while they're in the air and then land frozen. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. If it gets so cold that you can take a thingy of boiling water and throw it up in the air and it turns into, into like, snow. snow. Like, yeah, that, that's like, pretty cool. I've seen like, that. Like, make sure that you record that and put it up on the on the internet because, like, I, I love watching those. And I love watching people day. throw those and then it doesn't actually freeze and then they just, like, they just basically throw, like, really hot water on, them, on themselves and fucking freak out about it. Oh, do people throw <laughs> yeah. it on themselves? Because, like, I would just toss no, no, it no, off. No, 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 they, like they throw it. They... Yeah, but they throw it up, right? I've seen several that several where they've like they've thrown it up, and it's cold that it produces like you know the sort of steam that you kind of think is snow, but then it comes back down, still pretty hot, and they suddenly they're, they're like scalding themselves <laughs> because of like they're throwing hot water on themselves. Yeah, you really just need a mister and a fan, and you can just make all the snow you want. There you go. Um, All right, there's our I've non Eve an, segment yeah. for the day, ladies I've and gentlemen. I've got another non Eve segment to talk about. Okay, you have two minutes. Okay, that's fine. So, um, I got Fortnite, the Save the World PVE expansion, uh, to just see how bad 
well, it was on sale as well. And <laughs> it got, I was playing against someone. Well, no, I was playing with someone and someone just started like talking up on comms. I don't have my microphone turned on. And it was just like, in my head, I'm thinking, please just uninstall the game. Yeah. No? Uh, no? I kind of no, feel no joke. No, not funny. Hold it. Market Tycoon has a you can zap flies out of the air if you do this. Uh, that sounds no, like fun. Computer, USB, if you can. It, it's completely uh, evil, but yes, it, it probably is fun. Isn't that what those like fly zappers you can just buy or for? Who knows? Like, I don't do know. You know what I like? A ve uh, Venus fly trap. The, did you know they're that awesome. native to North Carolina? No, I did not. Yeah, so I can sigil one if you like. No, you I can't. I don't know if I'll be able to import that. I mean, actually, I have no idea. I don't think you can. No, like I've imported like a kilogram and a half of pistachio nuts, <laughs> and <laughs> because yeah. them, them pistachios, they're they're high grade. So, so yeah, Margaret, I, I, someone I... said. A... So Market Tycoon actually said that, you know, when... It was a case of, it's like, I'm going to send you some presents, and it's like, it was a kilogram and a half. I was like, well, yeah, that's nice. Okay. So Market Tycoon said that the guys that created this, uh, you know, this fly zapper with a USB adapter, some cables, a server, a webcam, and some DVD stuff, and a small program, they actually made a video about zapping the bugs with this uh, this thing, well. so... I know what I'm googling after this. Is it that Mark Tucker is <laughs> yeah, this the same group DVD that bug made bug. the weird uh, like bug zappers that target the female mosquitoes only or something like that in that uh, for uh, like setting up uh, safe areas and like I mean well, I mean what, what what that basically is that Mark is talking about is essentially a micro version of a Star yeah. Wars. I know what he's talking about now. I know what he's talking about now. It is pretty cool. I've I've seen uh, I saw the Wired article for for this crew. They were they were pretty neat. They um they, they can target own... specific insects. That's that's how that's how impressive it is. So it won't like kill bees or stuff like that, but it will kill uh it'll kill any uh, like mosquitoes only. Fuck yeah, I'll, it's I'll very interesting. It, I'll, I'll set it up to kill wasps and wasps just remember and... this guy appreciates that you only killed mosquitoes. Yeah, that, that bee just makes me so happy. I've got to buy one. Do you Even want me to? A... I will see. We'll figure out how much it is, and I will send you one. I will, we will sort that out. That he, have, he showed it off in a pre-game show, and it was like, who who would like that? Yeah. Obviously, people who prefer true. dinosaurs or badgers. But my my wife would not like that. The kids would squeak it and drive her crazy. She'd be... is Eric, Eric, is this the bad time to tell you that I may have already sent you one? No, that's great because then I'll use it to annoy my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, just uh, be get, you'll be getting some mail here in the next day or two. Okay, well, thank you just, very much. Just, just be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Alrighty, so we've got about eight minutes left. Let's go around with. Oh, look who has joined us! It's Urandus. Hey, Urandus. Finished my food. What did Urandus. you What did you have out of curiosity? Um. Breakfast, so you know, full continental eggs, hash browns, uh, sausage, and uh, French toast. What are so room service? What are Grandis, with you a lot of... telling me? What you are... wanted cat ears for your Eve avatar? I do want cat ears for my. So Eve. they're making fun of you in the new event. One of the loot drops is a broken piece of headwear, and it describes a a, a, a tiara-like object with uh, animal ears on top. That Fuck, you, CCP, on you. Fuck you, CCP. Fuck you. <laughs> that was worth me letting him know about this this stupid I loot. I want to loot drop. I want to know what Asshole continental CCP trying to fucking get on my nerves about what I want. I only want one thing, ZZ. Right. What are what are continental eggs? Is they, I mean, I've never heard They're that. Eggs phrase. from the, ship, the continent instead of from an island. They yep. were they were blue coats instead of red coats. There you go. Hey. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, if you really think about it, aren't we all on an island? Isn't the world, isn't the planet just an island in space? Sure. This is this is push a talk. Like, th there's no need for that kind of talk. Yeah. No, no yeah. need to try to get. No need. No need no. for deep 
this in in conversation here. We're yeah. we're a frozen bubble that's eventually going to hit something. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> we're not allowed to have any deep thoughts. Everything has to be very superficial, and you know. Exactly. He said deep. Deep <laughs> thoughts. Deep. All uh, women are queens. All right, so let's go around the room for the whole one last thing from everybody. And since Urandis is brandy new and has lots to say, let's start with him. Um. Uh, what's been on Urandis' head? What's been on in Urandis's mind this week? Um, I mean, lots of drugs and alcohol have been on my mind this week, but I mean, besides that, I guess who tank? Kind of, kind of trailed off there. Probably better. Probably I heard. <laughs> all I heard was pooty poop. There you go. There you go. All right, RJ. Let's give you your one last thing today. So uh, I remember last week I was kind of complaining that there wasn't an art stream. Uh, I'm still upset about that. However, um, when they did the whole structure presentation, I really, really like what they did with the new structures. Go, go, gadget, art team. You're awesome. Um, as well as, uh, if anybody caught those, uh, Gila skins or whatnot with like the VFX on them and like the stuff coming over the back of the wings and all that crazy shit, man, thumbs up. I need you... to check that out. Is that the new Death Glow skins? I, I didn't catch the name. I just saw them and I was just like, wow, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's Death Glow skins. So they kind of made up for their lack of art segment stream one of the things that we we don't know right is that whether they had like an art round table somewhere else and didn't make it a major stream but yeah that's one of the things i think every um big event that ccp does they should do hey hey this is the art of eve because the art of eve is gorgeous it's well like, well think about it there yeah. are so many people that live in high sec that will never yeah. see some of that art we'll never see yeah. titans in their beautiful, when beautiful keeps, star uh, captain skin of patriotism. When it keeps Star Wars deployed in, in perimeter, they were like, can people do that? <laughs> I would, what's really upsetting is if Eve ever did shut down or anything, it would be like literally burning the Mona Lisa because all that stuff just is gone. It's not living anymore, except in like maybe a book here. Or a video. Or a if video, Eve yeah. Ever, if Eve ever has a sunset period, it would literally... I, I can imagine it being the biggest free for all brawl ever. It will be people paying CCP to go. Like, I can run Eve. I'll put it on my server. It's fine. I'll yeah. host it myself. So, fine. So, yeah, exactly. It'll be like, it'll be fine. I will, I'll I will run pay it. To help. You don't have to worry about it. Don't take please away my, don't my game. Please, um, CCP, I think, please. Like, the day after Eve shuts down, um, the cure for cancer will be found, or something like that, <laughs> or just something and like. In, that. And in other news, pigs have suddenly started flying. Cured cancer, can... but at what cost? And at what cost? <laughs> I can just, I, I honestly think, if I was me Eve... again. <laughs> it's so bad. If I wasn't playing Eve. My productivity and other life aspects would just skyrocket. Probably. Probably, yes. Cancer. What did it cost you? Everything. Brackets but at what cost? At what cost? Home renovations that should have taken a weekend have now taken years. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, hey, let's go on to uh, over you, Scythe, right? Um, stay out of my fucking event sites. I need more Titan skins. That's it. There Fight you. you. Fight you. You don't have a double web in you ready to there or a triple web in you to, to web you, then get out of here. All right. Not committed. McLeod, you're up, brother. You have neutral alts. Put them in the systems where Scythe is pleased. <laughs> freak them out constantly. I was told that I was oh, not allowed bad. to do that. That's wrong. Specifically I, by I a person that, on the say... show told me that I couldn't do that. When I, I would really say, yeah. wanted to. I would say that is not a good thing to do. That is considered goon fucking. I'm pretty sure it up. is goon fucking, but I thought it would be funny. I mean, <laughs> for the bad. Can I do it on <laughs> April 1st specifically and be like, April full, it's fine. I'm very certain they won't see it that way. Yeah. Damn it. Imagine if 
we yeah one day a year like all rules against goon fucking was legal um, oh you mean like purge day purge yeah day. like purge oh, on purge uh, day. april the first I, I, uh, I thought we'd do the Valrat's birthday mm, Shoot we, do okay, we do organized fleets for that but i'm talking like complete non-organization do whatever you want how about you, McLeod? Let's move on to you. But we were on me. We worry? I don't know. I've lost yeah. track of where I am going around the circle. I could... I'm, I'm just, I just I... want to say, though, I, I need to buy Red Dead, Red Dead, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Me too. Uh, everyone's I'm not buying a PlayStation. Me. Yeah. Missed your up. Um, CCP should recruit more people for Q&A because when you launch an event onto the test server, that has it drop a thousand units of uh, Blood Raider loot, and you think, hmm, this is probably broken. It will probably be fixed before it comes live. And then, oopsie, they pushed it, and it still had shut it. Up. Cause... Shut up. No, no, it's, it's been fixed. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> it's been fixed. I know. It's been I'm fixed, mad. And it went back to the way it should do. So, what they could do is if they recruit additional QA people, actually test the test server or actually pick up the tickets and see oh this is actually can, can you server. stop giving ccp reasonable ideas god I'm damn, sorry I'm like a freaking but if they recruited just as well as amok did nah. we would be <laughs> oh, <laughs> god. oh shit do i need to put the graph back up put we need the to... graph back up no put, hold on no, put no. the graph back up Graph coming back. Very well endowed graph. <laughs> I like what Buttercup says. If the devs would actually just play their own game, how do you not see this stuff, right? They do now, though. They're they're yeah, allowed they're to now. Rules. Yeah, until they give somebody blueprints. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, that's that's enough. I think. Come on, I'm pretty sure the devs know that their own game is terrible because of Fozzy Soft. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure every single time I'm pretty sure every single time someone badmouths Fozzy Sov, somewhere in Iceland, Fozzy gets a gets a little He doesn't gets care. a little bigger Here, every time someone insults. Here's my one last thing, and here's what actually happens, Jurandis. When somebody bad mouths um Fozzy Sov, it actually snows in Iceland. So <laughs> So that's my one last thing. <laughs> I want to thank okay. everybody out there in the oh, audience. So dumb. <laughs> I want to thank everybody out there in the it's audience so dumb, that, that hung out with us and uh, commented in the uh, the comments and live stream. Thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, coming in to see us every week here. Um, thanks to Scythe, uh, McLeod, Mr. Warden, Durandis, RJ. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining the uh, stream today. And we will see everybody next Saturday. Have a good one. I love you. I love everybody. Bye. See, everybody says bye like nice people. Bye. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out of here.